a person happens to be driving from Winterbourne Whitchurch to Winterbourne Stickland near Blandford Forum, they may notice Winterbourne Clenston Church in a field on the right. On a sunny day, it looks stunning with its flint and Portland stone construction. The proportions are such that it plays tricks on the mind and gives the impression of a much larger, taller building, when in fact the spire is barely a hundred feet from the ground. The style of the church is commonly known as Victorian Gothic, or in architectural terms, modified perpendicular style. With its winding path to the church door, the whole effect is a perfectly composed picture. But why would such a building be built? It's said that the original church, which was down by the river, was small and plain and prone to flooding. The present church is far grander a place people would be proud to welcome guests. The date of construction is on the south face of the tower, in a sinkerfoil stone carving. Sinkerfoil, that's a five-petalled flower. It has the initials of the benefactoress, Margarita Mitchell, of Watcombe House. She was the daughter of Edmund Plydell. Her husband was the rector of Sturminster Newton Church. The Victorian Gothic revival style of the church draws upon medieval styles of architecture, rather than the classical designs of Greece and Rome. This church is perpendicular Gothic revival style, which is characterised by strong vertical lines. Imagine a preliminary meeting between patron Margarita Mitchell and architect Louis Vilmarie, showing different possible designs for the building. Would you like this one, madam, or this? The perpendicular Gothic would really impress, and I'm sure that's why it won the day. It's the sort of building which would encourage a high church ceremonial style of worship rather than the low evangelical Methodist style of worship which was becoming popular at this time. There was a movement at this time, the Oxford movement, to take the wider church back to its Anglo-Catholic roots, to a time when the gentry and the rector were a cut above the people, closer to God perhaps. Over the west door is a tabernacle niche housing emblems of a Christian's spiritual armour, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 The interior of the building is quite ornate, but also functional. There are several memorials to men fallen in the First World War, which are a sobering reminder of the cost of war for officers and men alike. On a brighter note, in 2009, the church was used for the filming of Jane Austen's Emma for the wedding at the conclusion of the film. I've driven past this enchanting church on many occasions. Finding out about its history has taken away none of its magical beauty.